I am Becky of ThePinkSamurai.com and in today's Enamel Pins 101 video I'm actually going to be talking about Instagram. So um, Instagram is my main marketing platform for my business. It has been for years and I think it's an amazing place for pins because if you just type in the hashtag pin game strong or enamel pins or <laughs> lapel pins or pin game or flare or just pin pins like you will get hundreds of thousands of posts so it is a very active community of pin makers on Instagram and pin collectors which is really great so um, I think it's the place to be if you want to market your pin business so I have a few tips um, five kind of main this is ten this is five five main things um, like top tips I guess that I would say that will help kind of up your Instagram game a little bit for your pins so I'm talking about things um, like varying your feed to make it more interesting um, what to do when you only have you know one to three pins like what do you even post when you don't have a ton but you still want to get your stuff out there uh, things like that so let's get into it Okay, so my first tip is to be consistent. So you wanna be consistent with your posting schedule and you wanna be consistent with your content. So this kind of goes into um, like picking a color palette for your feed. Um, I keep things a little bit loose with mine, but obviously I'm the Pink Samurai, so my feed has to have a ton of pink. Like, I want people to really know what they're getting when they're coming to my page. Like, you're going to see pink, and you're going to see cats, and you're going to see glitter, and most likely lots of sugary food. So, um, <laughs> that is what, what you want to do. Like, you want to really, you want people to really know who you are when they see your feed. Um, so my main thing is with my color palette, I like a lot of pinks, I like a lot of pastels, I like teals and purples. My main rule is basically no red, like dark reds, um, no navy blues, no hunter greens. Like I don't want any like moody, earthy colors, um, not a lot of black in my stuff. So, um... I like to keep it pastel and and cute. So pick some colors that you think work really well for you. Um, I'll have some examples of feeds that I love that that really exemplify this too. Um, my friend Libby of Lux Cups, who made this cutie unicorn cupcake pin, she has a lot more teals and like a really cool bright kind of palette, so you can see a difference there. Um, but yeah, okay, so being consistent in your colors will also help people know like when your stuff comes up in their feed, like they'll know that it's you because it'll be familiar and consistent with your other stuff. And in terms of posting consistently, I mean, if you have a business account on Instagram, then you'll see, you can look into your um, analytics and see how, <laughs> my cat. It's just running circles in my lap right now. <laughs> I'm so professional. Um, if you look in your Instagram analytics, it can show you when people are most active on Instagram for you. For me, that's about 3 p.m., um, but I also like to post at other times during the day. So just pick a time if you're just now getting into it or if you feel like you've been really inconsistent, just pick a time of day and go for it. Doesn't matter what the analytics say, just be consistent. Um, your stuff is going to pop up on people's feeds who knows when because of the Instagram algorithms. So if you're consistent just for yourself, then you've got that peace of mind. You know, you know, oh, at 12 noon, I'm going to post a video or a photo every day. You know, like just picking a time. And like, I like a lot of structure in my life. And um, I think it really helps me with any kind of anxieties that I have. Like, I know things are planned, so it'll be fine. So if you pick a time during the day that works for you, I think it's a lot easier um, to know and to hold yourself accountable to posting. So at least once a day. That's, that's another thing. Be consistent at least once a day. If you can't do it once a day, like once every other day. But uh, the more often you can, the better, I find. So consistent with colors in your feed and consistent with posting. Okay. 
So to help you be more consistent, another way you can really kind of set yourself up for success for that is to batch your photos. So think about if you want to do it once a week, if you want to do it once a month, um, you know, know how many times you want to post during a week or a month um, and batch your photos. Like count out how many photos you need to do and take that number of photos. <laughs> and that way you can have them planned. So when you know, oh, I'm gonna post a photo at 12 p.m. every day, you're gonna have a photo already ready for you then. Um, that has been a huge game changer for me. All of 2017, I did this. And it was a huge help for my business and for my engagement and um, just for my follower count on Instagram, which in turn impacts my bank account, you know, because the more people that follow, the more chance you get to connect with people that are really into your stuff. So batching helps with that. And I know in the first year of my business, I was just taking pictures whenever. And that stresses me out because you're like, oh, crap. It's nine o'clock at night. I haven't posted anything. What should I post? You know, do I have any old pictures? Did someone post my stuff? Like the lighting is terrible at night. I can't get a photo. Like you don't have to worry about those little things because it'll be done and um, you'll already have it waiting for you on your phone and it's glorious. <laughs> so yes, batch, batch, batch. And another point with batching, um, it's just a lot faster to take your photos. So like if you were gonna set up for photos, um, even if you have a minimal setup like me, it can take time. And doing that every day, multiple times a day, like that can be a problem. <laughs> but if you have everything set up, cleared out, you know, you know what you want to take pictures of, then it goes by so fast. And then you can have them all and then you can batch edit them and then you can like schedule them. And it's just so much faster. It just saves you a lot of time to batch. Like if you set aside an hour or two once a week um, or even once a month, then you can get a lot of stuff done and then just be prepared. So yes, again, batch, batch, batch. Okay, so now when you're actually taking your photos, when you're batching and stuff, um, sorry, cat hair, um, then I like to have a set number of backgrounds that I use. I think it's helpful to limit them at first. So when you're first kind of getting into the rhythm of batching your stuff, you don't want to overwhelm yourself too much um, with a bunch of different backgrounds and props and all this stuff. Like, I think keep it simple. And then once you get the hang of it and you're into it and you have a rhythm, then you can start adding more and more stuff. Um, so for my backgrounds, I like to think about colors and textures. So a lot of my photos are taken on this heart pillow <laughs> and this uh, fuzzy pillow um, just because I think the colors are perfect for what I want. Um, they work with my pins and it's nice because it gives um, a little bit of texture and variation to the photo. Um, I also use this I have this giant seamless that I got and I wrapped this around a table <laughs> in my studio that's sitting in front of a window so I always have a pink background ready to go no matter what sorry I'm looking in this in the viewfinder because it's ridiculous that I'm just holding up this enormous thing um but yeah I just wrap it around my table and I have it and it's ready to go so I can always have a background ready at any time and a lot of my photos use that pink now if you'll notice in my feed. Um, another thing I love is cork so I don't know if you know my love for the Ikea trivets I got these a couple years ago and they're perfect I just nail them straight to the wall it's a lot of people always ask where I get them and how I hang them it's like I don't really care about making holes in my walls so I just nail them straight but you can paint one side keep one side plain and you have all the options in the world and this is great if you want your pins to lay flat like if you have two post pins or something crazy that doesn't sit up quite right um, using this is really great because it won't poke holes in papers and stuff like that um, I am also a big lover of the glitter stuff I know a lot of people don't like using glitter backgrounds but um, any kind of really art paper or scrapbook paper that you can get on the, um, on the, on the internet. Um, also at Michael's or Joann's, any craft store should have them. But I love, here's one that has 
my collab pen with um, Sherodactyl on it. But I love subtle glitter. I love fat glitter. Um, it can be a little difficult with the shine to get it right. Um, but that's where this is a super secret awesome tip just for any kind of um, pictures. Use a silver or gold glitter sheet as a reflector. So you've got your table, you've got your pen, and then you can use this as a reflector to direct the light however you want. Um, silver will make it uh, look a little bit cooler and gold will give it more of a warm tone. So um, if you don't have foam core, which just white foam core is perfect for bouncing light and getting the shine that you want on your pen, um, but also this is amazing, especially with glitter. So get one of these, it's great. Um, but yeah, just keep, uh, I try to keep it simple. Notice all of these are different shades of pink. Um, I didn't go crazy. I, I do have others in my, um, I have like a little setup of all the paper that I have. But when I really decided to narrow my focus on Instagram, I just kicked them out. So dark purples, dark teals, they're beautiful, but they didn't really work. And they just stood out too much on my feed. And um, like sometimes you want to call attention to something and have it stand out, which totally works, but doing it all kinds of just hodgepodge, I don't think is, is very nice. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, pick some different backgrounds, get some textured papers, and then just play around with um, what you like there and what complements your pins the best too. Okay, so now you know when you want to post, how often you want to post, backgrounds for you to put your pins on. Let's talk about content. So when you just have one to three pins, your feed can get a little repetitive. And that is fine, I think, um, in some cases, but only if you really vary the types of photos do. And because you want to keep it interesting, you don't want people to just scroll by and be like, oh, I already saw that photo, you know? Um, so you want to keep people engaged, so you want to take different kinds of pictures. So I suggest taking lots of different pictures of the same pen in different scenarios. So I kind of break them down for myself when I'm scheduling out photos. So this is kind of my, my criteria. You can have a pen by itself, you can have a pen by itself on its card. You can have a group of the same pen uh, by itself, like with no card. Um, you can have a group of the same pen on a card. <laughs> you can have a collection of your pens together with no card. You can have a <laughs> collection of your whole pens on the cards. Like you see where I'm going? Like there are two different ways to do, um, to do each different scenario. And there's also, um, I would also suggest taking pictures of your pen in your collection. So if you've done trades, if you've done, um, if you've bought a lot of pens, then put your pen in with a group of other makers that makes sense. So you can either have like, this is some new pen mail, you know, look how cute my pen looks next to these pens I just got. Or, you know, here are my ice cream pens and here are sweets that match and like getting your pen in that group of other people's pens. Um, will help when you're posting because there's variation, you're sharing other awesome designers with your audience, and then if those designers want to share your picture, then they've got your pin in the photo too. So that is a really good way to get your stuff out there and to vary. Um, so I would definitely suggest um, just taking your pin in every different taking a picture of your pen and like every different scenario you can possibly think of. Oh, you can also do a pile. I love when I first get them and I'm packaging them all up and I take the uh, backers off unless the backers are pink, which makes a really cute photo, but just take pictures of just a pile of that pen and um, take it from different angles. Um, you can line up the pen in different grids. Um, there are all kinds of different ways you can vary your photos. So I don't want you to think like, oh, here's just a picture of my pen. 
and I'm going to show the same thing over and over and over again, you know, because that can be boring and you don't want to do that. Hmm. So I have a link below to a checklist of my top 10 favorite kind of content ideas for varying um, types of photos you can take of your pins. And if you use this in conjunction with your different backgrounds, like you can just exponentially have more photos because you can take all 10 of those different ideas and use them on different backgrounds. And then um, that just varies your feed even more. So, hey, definitely check that out. Okay, and this last bit um, is more for engagement and kind of getting likes and comments up, not necessarily just taking photos. So you want to ask questions. You want to engage with your, your audience. So um, I don't like asking tons of questions all the time. Like I don't want to be needy and be like, tell me everything and answer all these polls all the time. I feel so bad when I ask people uh, so many polls, but you want to engage with them because you're getting to know them and you're getting the engagement and eyeballs on your photos, which are, it's just so important with the algorithm the way it is now. Um, so some fun things you can do to get your engagement up is to just ask a ridiculous question, like something that's not even related to your photo, you know, you can be like, here's a picture of my awesome pin. I also really want some ice cream. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? You know, and um, like I like getting people to put crazy emojis in because I think it's really funny, <laughs> um, especially like the top five um, most used emojis. I love seeing people's top five <laughs> emojis. I feel like it really tells a lot about them in that moment. Um, and also like crazy ridiculous emojis and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, asking questions, um, and asking silly questions and just having fun on Instagram and like writing back to people. I'm not the best. I try really hard to, <laughs> um, because it's, it's good for the algorithm too. But because if someone's going to take time to talk to me on my Instagram, like I want to take time for them too. So um, definitely ask questions and be engaging and silly and have fun with your people on Instagram. Okay, so those were my five top tips slash strategies on using Instagram with your pin business, um, especially for newbies who don't have a ton of pins. So um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, let me know how you feel about Instagram in general right now. Um, I've been pretty lax with it, honestly, and um, I'm really just now kind of feeling excited to post more. And I think part of it's because I haven't had a ton of new stuff out but that should not stop me. I need to take my own advice and, and put more photos up and, and talk to people. And so, yeah, so let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if you have any other Instagram questions in the comments below. Um, give a like if it was helpful. Um, subscribe if you're into videos about pins. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.